All right, TSL, let's get it. Welcome back. Welcome to another edition of The Sales Life. And The Sales Life is just not for those in the sales profession. You don't just have to be in sales to watch The Sales Life because we're all selling our way to, through, and from something. So each and every episode, man, I want you to be a top producer. And to do that, uh, you've got to take some of the skills that we learn in selling and apply those to your life. Today, man, I've got episode 590, 10 away from episode 600. So a uh, new podcast out, um, and I've got the link on there. So if you prefer to listen through your ears, it's a longer version of uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, but it comes from Jim McKelvey's book, The Innovation Stack. Get you right there. And so if you don't know who Jim McKelvey is, you probably know his product. Uh, because uh, if, you've, uh, if you've seen small businesses, they have the little... Um, the Square. He invented the Square. Him and Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey is the co-founder of Twitter. So those two guys came together and they invented Square. Now Square is the little card reader that you plug into your cell phone, and that way you can you can swipe the uh, the credit card to accept payments. And um, to bring Square into the limelight, man, to give birth to it. You have to understand when he started working on it, cell phones were just starting to evolve. And here he comes with this idea of plugging a card reader into the cell phone and accept payments. See, we can see things today and it makes perfect sense. But think about when you first got your cell phone. Did you ever think that your phone would do what it does today? And so McKelvey was really struck with um, he learned in school, he learned how to do things. See, schools teach you how to do something. They teach you the technique, yet they don't teach you the timing. See, he learned how to do something. He just didn't learn when. And so many times what happens is, is we learn how to do something. And then once we can do, learn how to do something, what do we do? We move on to the next how. And so you find yourself in a life of doing how, 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 yet you feel empty and it's not fulfilling because you don't know when. And there's probably been times in your life where you're sitting here saying, when is the right time, right? And so you're thinking about, and so you find that you're, you're stutter stepping in life and you're saying, oh, you know, when, when, when's the right time to actually do something? And in that, this is where Jim McKelvey said that he was gonna to learn to become a student of when. Because it wasn't technique he needed, he needed timing. But the problem is, is you can't teach timing. You can't. There is no book that you can go that teaches you when on every situation that you have. When's the right time to actually do something? So McKelvey, to, as he set out to become a student of when, he, um, he learned to spot patterns. I'll never learn when, but I can learn to spot the patterns. And the first pattern that he learned, this is what I wanna talk about, is right feels early. And dude, when I first read that, I'm like, oh my God, that's so true. Right feels early. Think about all the times that you've been waiting for the right feeling to do something. And it all feels right. But as McKelvey writes, if you're waiting for everything to feel right, you're too late because right feels early. See, as humans, we move around in a herd mentality. And so we sync up with other humans. That's just our human nature. And so if it feels right, once it feels right for you, because we move in sync with the herd, then it feels right for a hundred other people too. And many times, if you think about in your sales life, man, you're moving by consensus. You're moving by what everybody else is actually doing. This is why I tell my salespeople, you have to zig where everybody else is zagging. Be a contrarian. Where everybody else is going this direction, this is where you've got to go the opposite direction and you have to zig because right feels early. And so, um, in order to learn to be an innovator, and you are an innovator, and it's not that um, you, you may not be coming out with the next product, 
but you are the product. And so to become that innovator, there's four things that you have to remember. That's what I want to uh, riff on real quick. Number one is right feels early. If, 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 um, if it feels right, then you're too late. Number two is you have to remember the, the problem. You probably haven't started moving. And part of the reason why you're not busting a move is because you're waiting on the right timing and so you're preparing for all these contingency plans, right? You're saying it's these win uh, this contracts. When that happens, then I'll do this. And so you're preparing for all these contingency pro uh, uh, issues. But the situation is, is it's impossible to know the unknown. And you have to remember as you're embarking on something new, this is unknown for you. And so, the unknown is going to arrive and if you're waiting to bust a move based on working all these contingency plans out remember the scope of thinking what you're the, the model that you're using is things that you already know but what but you're venturing into the things that you don't know so you're going to have to jump out there right feels early you're gonna to have to put it out there and then which is my point number three is then you have to adjust the plan it's always a constant timing see many times we give up because we feel like oh man it just wasn't the right time it's not that it wasn't the right time it's just you don't have the right timing this is why right feels early don't wait around for everybody else to think like you you be the one to jump out there number two is is there's going to be unknown things that arise so don't get all upset about that and then number three is you have to adjust the plan you can't can't jam your situation into this prefix plan that you already have don't just adjust the plan and do not throw up your hands oh man it's not the right time see I knew it no it's all adjusting the timing you remember those old cars that you used to have we all grew up on and the car you know had a carburetor and so you had to adjust the timing otherwise it was spit it was all spitting and sputtering and all that. And what did you do? You had to keep adjusting that carburetor, that timing. And that's what you have to do in your sales life, man. It's all about, so don't give up. Oh man, I started too early. I knew I wasn't prepared for this. You're never gonna be fully prepared. Just keep adjusting the timing. And number four, and this is the number one thing. If you take away anything, when you see me today, I want you to hold up the number four. When you text me today, I want you to hold up the number four. The number four thing, which is the number one thing, is the horizon of possibility. The horizon of possibility. This is what McKelvey, um, he coined the phrase. And basically what it means is, just beyond the things, uh, things are happening for you just beyond what you can see and feel. And they're helping you for your cause. You can't see it. And this is why you have to believe it to see it. Don't see it to believe it. That's what everybody else is in. Everybody else is waiting to see in order to believe. And this is, see, so while McKelvey was working on the square, and understand this, the cell phones were evolving. They're not what they are today. So here he comes with this off-the-wall idea that small businesses, see, credit card companies did not want, they weren't interested in the small business. They only wanted big businesses because the small people they didn't feel like could pay their bills, uh, that, that it was gonna be constant. That's why the credit card companies were so resistant to opening up for small businesses. And here McKelvey comes with this radical idea of a credit card machine for small businesses. And so not only was the cell phone not, the mobile phone wasn't quite ready yet, but also he had to fight against these deeply held traditions of the ivory walls of MasterCard and Visa. He had to fight against those too. But see, he didn't let that hold him up. This is why it's called an innovation stack. So while the cell phone was, was innovating, and while he knew he had a big bear to, to, to climb against the credit card companies and getting them to open up for small 
businesses, he worked on his innovation stack. And his innovation stack was a dozen other things to get the square ready while, horizon of possibility, while everything else was taking shape. He had that horizon of possibility, understanding that things are happening beyond what I can currently see that are going to help my cause. And when it's all ready, it's gonna line up. And that's exactly what it did. Dude, when you read the book, man, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. And so often, man, what we're waiting on, how many times, let me ask you this, how many times have you delayed because you're waiting on others? You're waiting on other things to happen and to take shape, and then I'm gonna do something, right? Feels early, there's gonna be unknown, adjust the plan, and the horizon of possibility thinking. Change and innovation are happening at a rapid, rapid pace. And it, it's, it's faster than what you can control and it's faster than what you can see. And McKelvey writes this, he emphasizes, once you can get, so change and innovation is happening super, super fast. Once you can adjust to that pace, you're already too slow. That's why right feels early. So what is it today, man, that you've been delaying you've been waiting uh, you know what's the right timing I, you know is this, this the right time what is it that you've been delaying on you know, doing and understand right feels early so for more on this uh, it's like a 30 minute episode listen to click the link on the uh the, the sales light podcast it is out it's on your favorite platform i put the link for itunes it's right there but it's also on Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Amazon Music, um, Deezer, uh, Stitcher. Uh, so listen to that because it's got a little more context. I try to keep the videos a little bit shorter because people's attention span isn't that long. So I try to paraphrase and get it in there. But there's more context in that. But there's something, man, that you've been delaying and you've been waiting on the right timing. And there is no perfect timing. You just have to start spotting the patterns. Be sure and share today's episode, man. And also, if you got something out of today's episode, man, I want to hear from you. Leave your comments below and uh, let me hear from you. If it's the replay that you're watching, that's cool too, man. Hit replay or put the hashtag replay. I definitely want to give you a shout out on that. So remember, the greatest sale that you'll ever make is to sell you on you because you're more than enough. Josh, thanks for watching. Sean, Reggie, Robert, thank you guys so much for watching. Y'all stay amazing. Stay in the sales life.